Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Evan from Epic Duel Time. I'll be doing the commentary on this video for this week. Uh, we have Tim on the left and Dan on the right. These are actually a pair of our newest members for the Epic Duel Time crew. They just so happen to also be brothers. So, Tim on the left will be playing an Insector deck, while Dan on the right will be piloting Chaos Dragons. Um, so, Dan starts uh, with turn one, playing a Solar Recharge, getting rid of a Lila. Drawing 2 and milling Monster Reborn and Card Trooper. He then plays another Solar Recharge, getting rid of another Lila. Milling Pot of Duality and another Lila. So, that was fast. Add a Lila's. Yeah, he's setting a monster. Um, sets a background, passes. Tim also sets a monster, and sets uh, his whole hand to the back row. So he's got five face downs. And Dan on the right summons an Eclipse Wyvern. Tim's looking to see if maybe he wants to respond to the summon. He chooses to Torrential. Dan's going to let it go. Dan also had a face down Sangan, so this is going to allow him to plus pretty heavily off of this play. The, um, banishing the Dark Armed with Eclipse Wyvern and searching out an effect failure. Sorry about the glare on the screen, guys. Uh, there's a or on the cards, I should say, uh, the camera angle wasn't perfect, and we had to make do. But for the most part, the glare doesn't affect the video. I've watched some of it already, but that's a dark armed. I'll try to make up for what you can't see. And then a quick blind MST. I actually have no idea what he hit. I'm assuming it was something obviously not trainable. Not that there would have been anything to chain. I have no idea what he hit, to be honest with you. Again, the camera angle was not optimal, and the graveyard was kind of out of the screen. And then Tim on the left summons a tour guide from the underworld. It gets Valored. He attacks. It's an Night Assailant, and the Night Assailant kills the tour guide. So it's really been a back and forth thus far in the match. Kind of a slow opening. Um, with a lot happening, but not a lot of damage are being hit on the board. And a bigger thing is there's a huge hand presence with Dan on the right, but there's a large back row presence with Tim on the left. So Tim's got outs, but Dan has power still in his hand. And the more cards he draws, the more likely he is to start drawing into those chaos monsters and start fueling that engine that he has all these darks in the grave. Keep in mind, he's got a Sangan, a Night Assailant. Um, he's got Eclipse Wyvern. He is a perfect graveyard right now to start dropping Chaos Monsters. However, I think he's still at this point either hasn't drawn one, and as you see, he just milled two of them. He mills two Dark Flares off of a card trooper, but at this point, he still does not have the graveyard he wants. Um, and may not just have the Chaos Monsters. So he attacks, gets deprisoned, which obviously means he's not drawing any cards. Um, Tim draws, passes turn, and by the way it looks... Dan draws, fends the graveyard, and does a check for targets, um, and summons Torgad. Choosing to summon another tour guide from his hand. I'm guessing he probably drew into that later, um, but it certainly wasn't optimal. He was drawing a lot of cards, so he pokes in for 2,000 with both tour guides.
He's choosing to, to overlay for NXEs. Searching the extra deck for the proper card. It's going to be that he goes for Levier. Uh, the Levier is responded to with Solemn Judgment. So Tim's down to 3,000, having paid half his life points to negate the summon of the Levier. He then normal summons Insector Centipede, attacks, and deals the first damage. Main phase 2, reviving Insector Ladybug. Either from, I'm assuming it's from his graveyard, I don't know how it got there. Um, actually, that's probably what he got off the torrential. That's probably what he torrentialed when he did the torrential. I'm sorry about that. And then he searches, of course, a um, dragonfly with centipede's effect, moving centipede up to level 5. Dark Holes on the main phase 2 to kill the Gores that was summoned off of the Centipede uh, attack. Um, then Tim uses Call. Gets the Ladybug and searches Hornet. Now at this point, he's got a nice hand. He can he can start making plays and getting ready for He's got the 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 dragonfly and the hornet, so on Dan's turn, the dark holes. He summons a Light Pulsar Dragon by banishing his Wyvern and a Torpid. He's counting his darks, as you can see, to see how he's going to get Dad. But no matter what, he still has to get it. He summons Chaos Sorcerer. And at this point, Tim chooses a Scoop. And the match goes to game two, with Tim in the lead. One, uh, excuse me, Dan in the lead, one zero. So definitely let us know also in the comments below what kind of matches you'd like to see in the future, whether they be character matches or certain matchups. We've been trying to cover certain matchups like Insectors vs Dragons. We actually had, don't have one of these, so it's kind of nice. Alright, so Tim opens, uh, plays Power Duality, and searches a Scarlet Road. Tim's going to set some back row, but first, he's going to shuffle him up a little bit. Make it a bit of a surprise. Now on Dan's turn, he normal summons a Thunder King Ryo. It gets bottomless trap hold. On Tim's turn, he then plays the Pot of Duality. He reveals a Prohibition, a Hornet, and a Call the Haunted. He opts to take the Prohibition, obviously a side deck to choice. Uh, Siding Prohibition is really cool if you're good at guessing. You have to know how to guess. You have to read your opponent really well, and this is really cool uh, what Tim does. Tim activates Prohibition, and I'll tell you what, he, he declares Solar Recharge. He knows that that's a huge fueling part of Dan's deck, but bigger, Dan seems to draw it all the time. If you know your decks and you know what you're doing, 
Prohibition can be one of the nastiest things you can sign. Because you know what your opponent's going to do before they go ahead and do it. Um, I keep two in my side for most of the decks that I play. Solid has one. Very few people are siding it. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to remember that it's a card. And the people who do tend to use it very, very well. So, if you're good at card guessing, you can certainly... You can get some really good games in. Um, so, Dan attacks. And with both monsters, reducing him to 6,000. I guess I was a little late on that editing. <clears throat> I was about to set a back row, but then it instead, so instead it sets two. And passes. Uh, Dan told me later that on uh, the Prohibition activation, there's actually a Solar Recharge in Dan's hand. So, again, a really good call. Uh, Tim has the Foolish Burial. And Insectra's Foolish Burial is definitely one of the nastiest setups. Especially where Hornet's at one. It He opts to really use it. He really, really, really he stands behind it, says it's really good for him. And, uh... When you draw it, you draw it, and it's really good. It's a really good setup play if you need it. And he, he finds a lot of success with it, so there are players who still really like it. Alright, so he sets one more back row and passes. Dan's turn. He's going to attack again with both monsters. Pushing in another 2,000, bringing Tim down to half-life at 4,000, with Dan still remaining at a full 8. Tim's going to activate a Call of the Hunted. The activation is successful. He resolves bringing back Insector Hornet. He's going to Mind Control Sangan. And this is what I really liked um, about Dan's play. He dust tornadoes the call of the Honda. It forces the weight, entire waste of Tim's usage of mind control. He wanted to make sure that he'd get the Hornet, but unfortunately when he plays mind control, he loses his Hornet. So the same game goes back to Dan's side safe and sound, and Tim is out of card. So he attacks with Sand Gan, it gets deprisoned. He attacks with Torgard, pushes in a thousand. Bringing Tim down to 3,000 just from Tour Guide and Sangan attacks. He's taken 5,000 damage. But in games like this, that doesn't matter. You're talking about two decks that have the nastiest combos and OTKs. He had set a Solar Recharge, which actually you can't do. Just as a heads up, guys, you can't set a Solar Recharge under Prohibition. You can't set or play the card. If the card was face down already, you can do it, but Prohibition was activated beforehand. Alright, he pushes in for another 1,000, bringing him down to 2,000. Yeah, just a heads up guys, when you are you under Prohibition, you cannot play the card. It doesn't matter about activating it, you can't play it. And setting it counts as playing it. You put it on the board. Just as a heads up. Nothing ever perfect happens on camera. But it's not a big deal. So he summons uh, T Tim on the left, summons Centipede, gets Hornet, pops Wyvern, uh, Wyvern gets Dad, and a um, Dragonfly is searched off the Centipede effect. Got caught up in a little side rant there.
and centipede attacks over the tour guard and that pushes in uh, 600 damage Alright, so on Dan's turn, he activates a Dark Hole, killing the Centipede. If you look in his hand, you can spot a Solar Recharge. Not that it matters, because he doesn't have a Light Sworn in his hand, it looks like, that he could be discarding for it. But, again, still a really good Prohibition. He ends up with two Solar Recharges. He has them, not that he can use it, but... So, he calls a Monster Reborn. This is a, a good call. He gets a Hornet and attacks. Um, and scores 500 damage. Having the Hornet on his side of the board is going to mean that Tim can't combo without killing the Hornet first. And Den's going to set a back row. and activates a tour guide getting a tour guide playing Levier to get his Thunder King Dan Thunder King that is he was banished from the bottomless trap hole earlier in the game using Thunder King to attack first knowing that he wouldn't want to kill it instantly then attacking with Levier Doesn't really matter what order I guess you attack in, but. Dan then activates Royal Decree, walking all of Tim's traps. He then summons a card trooper. It's going to be trap free. He chooses to mill three cards, milling a Trag, MST, and another card trooper. Knowing that Thunder King is pretty much dead on the board, uh, excuse me, uh, Levier is dead on the board, uh, there's nothing left to summon back. So he attacks into Trag. Excuse me, uh, he has Trag removed, that's why he can't summon it. But he attacks into Thunder King with Card Trooper, ramming them, and then getting to draw a card. Also putting the, the Thunder King back in its graveyard as a light target. But also meaning that that Levier is just going to float because there's nothing left to summon out of the remove from place. The Banish Zone. It's like 2.30 a.m. when I'm doing this video, so excuse my slipping tongue on this one. And then Dan, of course, has the Chaos Rusher, so he won't want to get that off without being negated by Thunder King. So he gets back his Dark Armed uh, with the Eclipse Wyvern's effect and banishes Lavier with Chaos Rusher's effect. Again, the last thing he really wants is to walk into something. Um, I don't think there would have been too much in the way of attacking it, but banishing it's always fine. I doesn't. I don't think it matters. If I don't think Tim Tim wouldn't run Avarice. I don't know. I might have attacked over. But all right. So for anyone who knows enough about insectors, you know it's coming. A Zect Caliber and a Hornet equipped to a Dragonfly means a hell of a lot of summons. So he does the combo, gets two centipedes. All the centipedes still have their effects. 
due to his Excalibur going back, to, excuse me, heading the graveyard, a centipede is put back into his hand. Hornet pops the back row. Those equipped with centipede. The MST is going to hit the prohibition. I'm going to guess that he searched a, a sword or something. Or a mantis. I'm going to guess he searched a sword. Centipede equips a hornet to pop a decree. And then the Gigamandus comes. Got awful fidgety in this part. One more. There's bugs. So I guess I'll take this moment to throw some plugs in. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let us know what you think of the videos. Um, talk to us down below in the comments. Say nice things. Don't say mean things. I hope everybody had a great holiday. Um, I spent Christmas with family. Uh, we have a new year coming, 2013. Very exciting. We all survived the end of the world. So that's pretty good. Dragonfly with the Amantis equipped attacks over the Chaos Sorcerer. And two centipedes push in for a combined total of 3,200, bringing Dan's life total down to 900. Dan draws for turn. I think Dan drew into the max C. Because that's really unfortunate. He banishes two for late pulsar. Tim does not react. And then Dan just scoops. That's kind of anticlimactic in that in that round, I, I'll admit that. Alright, game three. Game three is pretty good. Spoiler alert, it's good. Not gonna tell the winner though. That'd be an ass move though, if I just like told you the winner in game two. What power I hold. I know who wins. You can see me in the right having, uh, in the upper left hand corner having problems with my chair. I should put some music in the background. I should be listening to music. Some Vivaldi or something. <clears throat> okay, so Dan says uh, back row and ends. Uh, Tim has Dragonfly, Mantis, and then the Heavy, which is, must be nice. Ouch. And he plays Maxi, which is, I guess, the best time to use Maxi right now. Because something's going to happen. And this is a deterrent from, using, from doing Maxi's. But not much of one. So Dan draws for Maxi. Uh, Hornet is summoned, which is obviously like the best choice for that. Because you want your Hornet out. Think about how, like, those cards are limited. Right now, those two cards right there are limited. And yet, like, they come out so much. It's still so consistent. I remember everybody was, kept saying, like, oh, Insector's going to be dead. I was like, you know, that deck's still really, really consistent. Because so I'd like to see it do well. Uh, they're still sucky, though. Okay, so a combined total of 3,400 pushed in against Dan, bringing him down to 46, to Tim's 8. Tim sets two back row. He's got a healthy looking field. Dan summons his tour guide. 
anybody else notice that, like, Tim doesn't ever draw a solemn warning? All the background in the world, no solemn warnings to be seen in, in this match. I don't know, I think that's odd. Or he's just not using them. So, you can tell what he wants to do is he's going to Sangan ram into the dragonfly to get a search and kill the dragonfly. So, Tim sees that coming. So, before the, the enter battle phase, he does a threatening roar. Dan passes his turn to Tim. So, a really good play here is that... I mean, I guess the obvious play, but a good play, is that he attacks over the tour guide with the Hornet pack 24 and he turns the dragonfly to defense mode because then saying game can't won't deliver the ram into it again or try to ram and then he set it back row I think Dan tried to attack I don't really know I don't know what that was I think, yeah, I think he attacks. Because then he gets compulsed. I'm going to have to assume that he attacks. Like, that's what that poke meant. Their actions aren't particularly deliberate in this. In this. Alright, so Dan's hits a monster. One would have to assume that it's going to be Sangan, and it wouldn't be Raiko. Because right now, like, Tim is, like, one card away from, like, being able to nuke him. So I wouldn't set a Raiko if it were me, but... It could be a Raiko. I think it's Sangan. I forget. I really don't actually remember what it is. I watch these games and I don't remember what happens. It's 2.30. I don't want to talk about it. <clears throat> okay, so then Tim summons Sangam. And it's like, woot, Sangam's out. And Sangam's going to overlay with the Hornet. Keep in mind that Giga Manus does not give his level to anything. People think that. He doesn't actually give his level. So he summons a Leviathan, pulling off the Hornet. Turns the Dragonfly to attack mode, and now Hornet's ready for go time. Dragonfly gets equipped with the Hornet. Uh, and it was saying again, look at that. Shocking. So Hornet nukes him. And they were asking how it, how the chain works out. So Dan searches a Raiko. And him searches... Ah, Simon's Centipede. They were... I don't think they calculated life right. I'll, I'll be honest. They didn't calculate life right or something. Because Tim is game... And I am ending it where he has game. Uh, Tim wins the match anyway, regardless of the life calculation. Uh, you can see, like, from this board, he does. Um, but he takes Hornet and pops Dragonfly. His ending combo is kind of confusing. Because I don't think he realized he had game. I don't know what they had life at. I had life so differently. So he valors the centipede in chain to the hornet uh, to make it not search. And so Tim's like, yeah. And I don't know why he went back to look through his deck again. I don't know. I was real, real confused. They called me about it. I said, yes, you can do it because it's just you're chaining it to hornet. But I don't know why this is confusing. Either way, so, the attack totals of those monsters equals game. I think they just miscalculated it because you don't see them really end it. But it, that is game, and that is our match. I know it's a little anticlimactic, but it's okay. Um, I'll talk to them about it after. So, if you like this video, please like. Hit the little like button, that button below the video. And comment and subscribe. We are past 3,100 subscribers. I think we're like at 3,150 or something. So, that's awesome. Thank you for all your support. 
Um, I hope everyone is having a great holiday. We will continue to try to keep up on a regular weekly video, uh, a dual video and a deck profile from that dual video. Check out Tins in Zetro deck profile. Link in the description below. Keep doing America.